for the third time. For the third time, after the second failed uh, sessions, they decided to create a pure Java API for that. And gave the additional statement that um, they leave it open for other languages, other community members, whatever, to create a more declarative language or something like that, what Sun tried to invent with the JavaScript 1, uh, yeah, Java FX script in version 1. So, <clears throat> today I want to talk about GroovyFX because GroovyFX is one of these, um, from my point of view, one of the best ones, um, of these custom DSLs on top of JavaFX for simplifying creating JavaFX ampl applications. So, question from my side, who ever did something with JavaFX? Okay. Um, who does not know what JavaFX is? Okay. So, let's start with that. From those who does, uh, that do not know what JavaFX is, do you know what Swing is? <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Swing is, <laughs> Swing is a desktop application framework, or is, no, it's, it's a toolkit for desktop applications, so for writing fat applications, fat GUIs. And JavaFX is, um, I would say, the next step towards a more modern toolkit for um, desktop applications. Although Swing has a bad reputation, it still is very major and very good and if you know what you're doing. The problem is most of us do not know what they're doing. Um, JavaFX is trying to fix that a bit, but you still have to know what you're doing. Um, but a lot of these complicated things could be encapsulated with such things like GooFX. So, from now on I just want to give a introduction to proof of X and have a little showcases and whatever what you can do. So some things about me. My name is Alexander Klein. Most call me Sasha. Sasha just for the confusion is the Russian nickname for Alexander. Even my parents call me Sasha, so that's fine. I'm from Germany. I'm living in Stuttgart. I'm working for Codecentric. Um, there I'm um, doing consultant stuff, um, coding stuff, although I went to the dark side of the force um, doing more management stuff there, but only about 15% of my time, so I still head deep into coding. So from the introduction, what I said, what is GroovyFX? GroovyFX, as I said, doesn't work. Oh, no. It's a library for JavaFX using Groovy. So, and it is using the Groovy builder pattern. Um, does anyone know what the Groovy builder pattern is or looks like? Does, no? So, if you're much more deep, I give a short introduction, but if you're more deep inter um, interested in that topic, I have another talk today in the afternoon, so they are going deep in there. Here you will see how to use that and it really, really feels natural. Um, and as well as the DSL on top of JavaFX. So it's just a custom thin layer on top of JavaFX, but all the doing, all what's, what you see is still JavaFX down there. But it's declarative, it's easy to read and simple to write. And it's more natural than you would code it in pure JavaFX um, style, like that. So this is one of the most important things. Uh, in the past, you saw a lot of, um, a lot of tries to put the, the UI style into XML or any other stuff for better readability, but I think none of them really worked out until we got something like QFX or Swing Builder for Swing from the Groovy side. So just for references, you find GrooveFX and GrooveFX.org. And it's an open source project on GitHub. Everyone is invited to help out, starting from writing documentation to new features. 
And as well, because of documentation, there's a bit of a lag at the moment. Um, we had more, we had some documentation, or we have some documentation on the GrooveFX org site, but still there are some other stuff, for example, on the old Groovy Codehouse org web page that is not live anymore, but there is a mirror out there. Um, so on the other page, you can see what had been in the past and what has to be merged into new documentation stuff. So for a little ex um, example, what could this look like? Oops. Something like that. If we want to do something like that, how could it do that? Just for a short, not, not going so deep at the moment, but just going short how it could look like, we just start with a static method the start, that is doing all the stuff as well for creating or starting the JavaFX application. You don't have to, if you know how to do that, it's not so hard, you as well can do it the other way, but this is a very convenient way. In there you have stages. Stages in JavaFX, you can think about it's like the window you see, or better to see it's like a browser if you have a browser stuff. And inside of stages you will have scenes and scenes, you can think about, it's the page in the browser. So you could have multiple scenes, but you can only see one scene at a time, but you can switch between scenes. Um, so here for you as well, see the, the groovy builder pattern syntax is like that, that you have name of the node, like the stage, and behind there is just the normal um, stage class in, in um, JavaFX scene.stage, and you have attributes that can set, like title or visible, the stuff that, that, and you as well sometimes have some value that you can give. We'll see that later on. So, and if you have some nested elements, you just put it into curly brackets, enclosures. So, in here we just have a scene where we have a border pane. You maybe know that you have these five areas center, top, button, left, and right. And in there, we have a horizontal box, so all the elements are ordered horizontal, or layouted horizontally, um, with a text hello and a text great conf. Then we add just the fill, so fill is the background color, or the, no, the foreground color in this case. Um, that is a linear gradient from green, and there from black to black, uh, sorry, blue to blue, or C into blue. And we as well can add drop shadows, or other effects, like, am I still up, open? Yeah. As you, it's not so easy with a beamer, but you see you have a glowing effect about, about this, uh, around this text. And beside that, we have these stars. There we can just have a group of different, um, different elements. There we have the star. The star is a method. I ha don't have it in detail. And here we see something how to do that later on. It's just a path. And we have this label as well. And we can add transitions. How to do that, we'll see real soon. So, if we just start simple, we just want to have a simple window. I try to open that and show that. Um, I hope it comes soon. Something like that. We just have a window, and we have a label showing "Hello, Great Conf." A simple thing. So, what do we have to do? It's just to say, okay, we start with our GrooveFX starter out there, and in there we create the stage. In there we create the scene. This is just the pattern we have to do always, all the times. And we say, okay, in here we just set a style sheet. As JavaFX is stylable by CSS, you can add one or multiple CSS files for styling, like you could, would be used to from a browser side, from HTML. Um, it's using the same syntax. It's mostly not using the same um, elements at almost, or the, the, the keys. It's almost prefixing that minus fx because sometimes there are some different semantics. But it's very easy to style and um, change the view of what you want to show. So in GrooveFX, it's very simple to add one or multiple style sheet. Just add this <coughs> style sheet call in there with the name of the style sheet, and that's it. 
This will automatically um, relate it to the scene where it is put in. And then we just need a label, just the norm label. Here we have the text, hello great conf, and we say okay for the styling, this is the style class big. How it looks like that this font size is I think 18 at the moment, um, is defined in the GroovyFX CSS file. So we're ready to go. This is just the marker that it should use the big class. So as a general contract, you just say, OK, the name of such a node, like stage, is a container node if it can contain something. And then you have an optional value, like here in the label, you see this hello great conf. This is mostly used as a default for one of the attributes or one of the properties, in this case for text. Because it's very often used, you don't need to specify it. And on top of that, you can add attributes. Attributes like the title or if it should be visible after creation. Uh, most of the times, this is just calling a setter on the object. But sometimes, like the visible here, there is a functionality behind that that is just done by um, Groovy effects. So, and if you have a leave or a subcontainer, the same syntax, and if you have a leave, so they're uh, an element that cannot contain any other things like buttons or labels or stuff like that, it's the same logic, just give the name of the node or of the leave and values and attributes. So this is all you know, and this is the general contract for a Groovy builder pattern that you might have seen with Markup Builder as well and other builders. So let's go into a bit of yeah, what we normally want to have or see. So uh, closing that, opening the next one. So very often we have forms. For a simple form where I just have a label and a text field where I can enter something, and if I enter that and I hit enter, I want the value just shown down there in a third label, just for a simple example. So how would we see, uh, achieve that? Okay, just our stage and scene as always. So in there, we just want to lay out all the components in a vertical box. Means all the components are vertically ordered one after the next. So we add the label, and we say the text is the name. OK, because it's a static label. We add another label. Then we say we don't want to have a text at the beginning, but want to give it an ID. The idea of the label, um, most of the elements, you can just give the ID um, argument or um, attribute, and GrooveFX automatically creates a variable in the binding or in the delegate of the builder that you're around, so you can just reference to that label that is created in here later on in your code, for example, here in an action. So, and the ID attribute is really a nice thing where you can just say, okay, this is the variable that should be used in my build script or my, my GrooveFX script, and as well, the same thing if I target to other, um, other files, and there you have this variable as well. It's just in the context of the builder. So in, in the middle, we have this text field like that, and we say, okay, no basic input or nothing in the, in the moment, in the, mom uh, in the beginning, but if I hit enter, there's the on action method. This is the same, it's a call to, um, uh, for the Java FX API as well, where I say, okay, when the on action occurs, so the hit hitting return in this case, this closure should be called. And here I get the event from the key event or the return key event, and then I say, okay, the result, and you see this is this label, because it's already in my, my binding, I can um, access it, set the text of this result to the text of the event source. So in this case, the text field that had been entered. So, but very often, we don't want to make these things um, 
manually to, to add the values into other uh, variables and other components um, manual. Therefore, we have the binding. Binding in JavaFX is a very crucial and very important feature. And GroovyFX simplifies uh, working with binding a lot. So here, if I type now, if I type um, a name in here, um, the labels down there, I'm just showing different versions how to bind, um, will automatically update it. And as well as you see here, the one before the last, um, I even can add or c convert the code and add some other, um, yeah, like this prepending the text like there into the label. Um, so how can we achieve that? Binding can be done with the bind keyword. The bind keyword is like a method that you call in there. It's creating a binding holder where you say, okay, please bind the text property of the label to the text property of my text field. And um, if both elements are um, properties, this will be, bi be, direct di uh, be directional. So if one of them changes, the other one changes as well. Um, for simplification, this is the standard uh, procedure in JavaFX to have the name of the property and then add the property name and call this as a method. So text property and parentheses. Uh, for simplifying live a bit, uh, because most of the groovy coders are a bit lazy in typing, stuff like that. There's a simplified version where you just can get rid of the property stuff. So just say text that, that is automatically added by, um, by GrooveFX. And you as well um, can simplify, uh, can do another thing. Here you see it's not so easy to read. <coughs> Uh, on the beamer, but here these are curly brackets. You could combine with curly brackets, and in there you just call the getter, the normal getter, so get text. And this is automatically listening to um, any change of this property in there. And even if you have multiple properties in this closure that are used in there, like text and visibility and whatever, this um, then you will get the event for, oh, something changed there, and then the binary will reoccur. So this is an easy way for listening to multiple properties at the same time. We'll see an example later on. Um, another way is that I, if I have the property where I want to listen to just as a text, I can say, okay, to this text field, listen to this property. And I even can add converters. Um, I just say, okay, bind this text field with the property text using this converter, and there I can do anything I want to do. Just the result I get as a, uh, the default parameter or the parameter to the converter. I get the value that, should, that comes here from the text field, then I can convert it, and the result will be bound to the label. Um, and last but not least, if you want to do the binding not in here, declarative, but maybe in your controller or another kind of code, you can do it externally as well. You have the bind the text from the last label to the text from the text field. There as well, you can add dot using or using the converter. You have the same possibilities there. So now. We've seen um, a lot of binding to, sorry, wrong key, uh, binding to other components, but sometimes you want to bind to some beans or some other components you have. So here in this example, just some text field as well with my name. Can do something else, and I have a date picker where I can just pick the date and I say something like that. Okay, and it's automatically calculating the age into the label and the name. So Hans is 37 years old. To do that, GroovyFX helps with creating the beans. Like normally, you're used to getting groovy beans where you just have to specify the string or whatever, all the properties in there, like you see in here, a string name, a local date birth. 
And if I want to have that bindable, in Groovy, normal bindable, you can just say add bindable, then it adds the add property listener stuff and like that. And the same thing is for JavaFX binding done by the FX bindable annotation that is delivered with GroovyFX. So this is all we can do. We can add the, uh, this is all we have to do. We can add the FX bindable to the class, so all the properties will be bindable, or I can only put it in front of one of the properties, then only this, this one property, at least only this property will be bindable. So in this case, we just create a dummy person with my name, and then we start our application. Okay, stage, scene, style sheet, whatever, the same that we have. Okay, and I bind the text of the text field, and I bind that to the property name of the dummy. Because there's absolutely no difference between components and beans that are a, a transformed via FX bindable. And as well, for the date picker, just the property value of the date picker will be bound to the birth variable of my dummy person. And for the label, here I use this curly bracket notation because I say, okay, I want to listen to the birth and the name of the dummy. So if one of these properties change, changes, then this converter will be called and the result will be put to the label. This converter is just creating a string, name is mm, years old. So, this is just the normal binding stuff, but a little bit of about layouting. We just saw V-boxing, H-boxing, the same in horizontal. Uh, for the border pane, um, where I just said we have these um, top button, left, right, and center areas, very easy, where I just say, okay, I wanna have something like here, it's bound to a label in the bottom, and there's a header up there, and there's an image to the right, and this text field. Yeah, so it's easy, I just add these border pane. So one of these components is the border pane, and inside of the border pane, I wanna I have different areas. I can specify the top, bottom, left, and right, and as well the center area. But the center area is the default area, so I don't have to specify center. I can if I want to, but I don't have to. And they even don't have, in, have to be in some special order, so you can do it as it pleases. And so just put the label there, put the text field in the center, um, put the label in the bottom, and the image view in the right. An image view is looking to, the, um, to, the, to your resources, by default and loading that, but you as well can add files or any other locations you want to. So for more complex forms, we can have, uh, normally in, in Swing, you would have used the grid back layout, the infamous grid back layout. Anyone work with that? Great, have you been happy? So it's a bit easier to work with the grid layout in JavaFX. And just for a normal default small um, form that we have, you have a label on there where you can enter my name. I as well can enter my email address. And I can send any message and I can send it. For an additional feature, just for development reasons, I'm showing things is if I hover over the label here, I just see my lines of my grid just for simplifying development times, just as a showcase here. But it's nice and easy to do such things. So what we see here is just the same logic as everywhere. Okay, I have the grid pane. This is my component that I put there. Then I add some properties like the horizontal gaps and vertical gaps that you see between the columns and rows. And some padding around right and left and the alignment where it should be placed. So, and then inside, I just add a column constraint. So I just say, okay, in my grid pane, I have multiple columns, in this case, two. The column constraint with my minimum width of 50, so it could be, couldn't be smaller than that. Uh, the other has a preferred width of 250, but we'll 
um, will be enlarged by the age grow um, if the window will be uh, maximized or the size will be changed. So then I just put the elements, and here in the elements, now automatically, because of I'm inside of the grid pane, um, I can just say, okay, this should be put into the row zero, and it has a column span of two. So it should be over both columns. Um, this is not coming from the label, but it's coming from the grid pane where it's placed into. And as well, label, as well here I can say, Beside from saying this is the style class in CSS, I as well can write the style directly, so it should be have font size of 18 pixel uh, to have it a bit bigger. So all I have to do, horizontal alignment, margin, good to go. Inside of the label, normally you would say labels cannot have any content. But in this case, events or event handlers are even some kind of content that is related to the label in this case. So these things will be as well related to the component by putting into the preventive, into the curly brackets. So in there I just say, okay, inside of the label I have an on mouse entered event. So if I hover with the mouse, and I have an on mouse exited. And there we just set the grid lines uh, visible to true or false of the grid outside there. I just say, okay, this is my label, get the parent, the parent is the grid pane, and there set the property. Um, this is an easy way, or one of the best ways as well, for creating some actions. The other thing is just normal. I just say, okay, this label is in row one, column zero, text field, and so on. As well with the button, that's all you have to know. So fairly easy, and I think if you don't have seen, or wouldn't have seen um, what it should be represent or look like, it's, it's well easy to read about that, much easier than in Java code, um, and that you can imagine how it should look like later on for finding bugs and stuff like that, even in development time. Because this is re really declarative and visible in this stuff. Working with lists is easy as well. So. Here as well, I create a selection holder for selection there, but um, what I want to show here is I have a combo box or choice box where I can select values. Green, for example, then I have a list. In this list, I can select values as well, for example, the red one. And the result that is currently selected, so you've seen they are bound, to, bound together. So if I change the, in the list or change in the combo box, the other one is changed along with that. Um, I see the result in, in this label and in the other components. This as well is not much more code than that. Oops, I'm sorry. Um, not much more code than that. Because here I have this choice box with a drop box. And I say, OK, the items that should be shown there is just this list. You see here, colors is a list of just four st uh, three strings with color names. Um, but I as well say, okay, please, if something is selected in there, so the selected value, please bind it to my selection holder up there to the selected property. And that's everything to do here. And for the list view, list view is my list that I show there. I can say, okay, this gets a name, my list, that you can reference on in it later on. And as well, it's using the same source for the list to show. And if the onSelect event occurs, then please change the selected value of the selection holder, which automatically fires an event that will be received by the choice box. Oh, the selected value had been changed, so I have to change my selected value in there. So they are automatically interlinked. And on the other side, to do it with the list, uh, list view, um, stuff in here, I can say, okay, if my selection holder changes in here, I say, okay, then please take the selection model of my list and select this as a new value. The problem with lists is that you have, or you could have multiple selection. So you normally in a list, you don't have just the selected value that you combined 
because you could have multiple values bound there. Uh, but you have the selection model. And there is a property, the uh, methods, and as well properties that you could bind. Um, so this is as well not so much work to do, and it's still easy to read. And here I just bind the label to my selection holder, and I get all the changes automatically reflected. Reflected. Um, when we just talked about colors, um, GrooveFX does a nice job for simplifying specification for colors. So all the named colors in the, in the JavaFX scene color class are automatically added as properties to the binding context, uh, builder context, sorry. So this means I can just use blue or green or shade, um, slate gray or something like that. All the defined, um, defined, uh, default defined colors are there just to use. If you're inside of a closure like the start, any closure that is uh, inside of the builder logic. Um, but as well, some helpers for simplifying specification of colors like HSB, uh, HSB uh, values or um, RGB, RGBA. And you even have the way for s doing like that like that. So you have just a string or a property. Here the delegate is the automatic link to the um, scene graph builder, that is the builder that is used by the uh, groovy effects in, in background. Um, if you call the property with a name starting with a hash sign, then it's trying to convert that to a color. Um, this only works with preparing that with delegate or the, the builder. Uh, this is not so nice. It's just on my, um, it's as well on my list to change something like, like that to simplify life. But at the moment, this works like that. So for creating or using with the colors, I just want to create some tables. Um, I'll show, the, show you how it looks like. There we want to have a table where I see the U brightness and saturation values as they are in there. And the color are defined. The opacity, I want to have that in percentage value. And then I as well want to, have, want to have the VAP color value, and I want to see the color, because we as humans normally are not so good in reading numbers for pretending uh, <coughs> how the, the color looks like. So for the normal colors down there, it's very simple. I just say, OK, in, inside of my table view, where I say my items, this is well here a list, what we had before. Or I have to say it is an ob observable list. Uh, that sends events if something is changing in there. And um, GrooveFX is automatically, auto automatically converting normal lists to um, observable lists. And cell selection, stuff like that. And in there, I have columns, table columns. There, I have the headline, um, like color, and I have the width, or the preferred width, that defines how um, wide the column should be at the beginning. And start with that, I just say, OK, the value is reflecting the property of the element that you, that, uh, the property you that we have in the value, the value that we're on current row, showing the value in the list here. Um, this is my text and the width. So these are very easy if I have the value and want to show that directly. But if I want to convert that a bit, so for example, the opacity is just a decimal value between um, 0 and 1. And I want to convert that into a percentage value for easy readability. So what I can do is I can add a converter that is acting like the binding converters, the same logic. Here I get the value in there and say, OK, round that, add a percentage, side, a percentage size sign, and this is the value that should be shown. In the case of the web color, I have the problem that I don't have a web color value in my color object. Because of that, I just say, OK, um, I have to do the calculations myself as well. Here I say uh, the value that I want to get from this object, I want to calculate myself. So therefore, I have the cell value factory where I can say, OK, I get the color, 
um, as the value of my input um, object that I get, and then I just do my calculations for RGB and format it and re um, return it. It has to be returned as a observable value. Um, one of the improvement stuff that could be done for GrooveFX as well for simplifying that life that if it's not observable, that it will be wrapped into an observable element. I think I'll do that in Zoom. Um, and for the color that I want to see, so this box with the real color, there we have not only to get the value from the cell value factory, but we as well have to say, how should it be visualized? Therefore, we have the cell factory. So we can specify any visual element. In this case, we just use a rectangle. A rectangle of 40 to 20 pixel. And I have to return a table cell. A table cell has a method update item in there. So if this cell is updated for any reason, um, I just say, OK, set the fill of the rectangle to my color. If there is no color or should be empty, I just use trans um, transparent. And then set the graphic of this table column, and then it will be used. Set graphic will get a node. A node is the base component or the base class for anything that is visualizable in JavaFX. So you can even use a button to show there, or any paths and shapes and whatever you want to. Even Whole windows could be put in there, or with complex stuff that could be shown there in the, in the tables, cells. Um, one thing that is missing from JavaFX by default is some kind of action handling. If you ever worked with Swing, you know the, um, the action abstraction where you can say, OK, I define my actions. And later on, I use it in toolbars and menu bars. And how is it visualized depends on the com component I use this action. JavaFX is missing that. But GrooveFX is giving us this feature back by giving the actions um, group and inside the JavaFX, uh, the FX action elements. So here we can say, OK. Describe it on a central place where we have, OK, the safe action, it's the idea, the name, or the text that should be shown is safe. Some description is this safe something, and so on. Accelerator, if it should be enabled, and the action that it should be done. Whatever it means for action, for a toolbar, it would be clicking the button. For any other things, it could be return, um, hitting return or something like that. So if the action from the component occurs, then this should be done. So I can centralize my definition of my actions and later on use them, even use them multiple times. Um, for example, here I have a menu bar. And inside of the menu bar, I have a menu. Here I do it manually. I just say, OK, the menu item open has this action. And I will have a rectangle as the icon, because icons don't have to be icons as images, but just can, as be, can be any node, like a rectangle as well. Um, and here I use the safe action we defined earlier. So I just say menu item, give the safe action, on all the values that are specified in safe action will be used in there for visualizing the stuff. On top of that, I can change things or add other things, like adding a graphic that I didn't specify before, or maybe I specified it different, and that's it. So for separator lines, I'll show how it should look like later on. For separator lines, um, I have this um, separator menu item. So if I have this menu in here, file menu, I have this open. The save action, there we had enable to false. Because of that, it's grayed out. Then we have the separator line, as you see there, and then the exit element. Um, here we have, in the edit menu, we have cut, copy, paste. We have checkbox menu items that you can check. You have radio item, uh, radio button items, and you have as well submenus. This is really easy to use. For example, I bound the save 
I can as well bind to actions. So if I just click here, then automatically the save button will be a save element will be enabled. So this as well can be handled by binding. Um, so to achieve that, that's really easy like that because I can say, as I did before here manually as well, but they're using the copy action, the paste action, and so on. For the track box, uh, radio buttons, I ha I'd have to put or define a toggle group that they will be switched in between. This is normal behavior, but you still can read it very easy. Submenus down there. And um, if I want to reuse that in my toolbar down below here, where I have the cut, copy, and paste, I can just use the actions as well here. I can just say, OK. In the, on the bottom, I have a toolbar, and there I have a button. This is manually, but this is just easy using the copy action again and using the paste action again. I as well can say, OK, please skip the name. I don't want to show the name here, because I only want to have the icons. So this is an easy way for reusing actions and components um, that is lacking from JavaFX, but is uh, given back by GrooveFX and is really helpful for defining that in your applications. For charts, I don't want to get into because of time. I just want to show an example how it would look like because I think they look nice and they're very easy to achieve. Elements where I just have um, can add slices on the run. I just have to specify the points for for the different diagrams I want to show. Um, and as a small lookup, for example, for such a line chart, I just have to specify the series that should be that is defining one row, and I can put that there, and it's very easy to specify. Um, you always have to have in mind that. GrooveFX, as every other builder, is just normal code. So you can use while loops, if conditions, switches. You can do all the list manipulation stuff you know from collection stuff. So um, as this is not just description or a declarative description like in an XML, you as well can create your dynamic screens using <coughs> GrooveFX notation. So especially for that, it doesn't have to be hard-coded. You as well can create the data from variables. You can create the data on the fly and so on. Um, one of the big features of JavaFX is that you can get a bit more fancy for how it looks like. So how can we do that? So one simple thing is paths. Um, key. So, if you ever did something like that in Swing, normally you would do that with an image. But this isn't an image. Okay, I have to say, originally it had been a um, SVG file because it's simpler for creation, but I converted that into a normal path, a path object uh, in GrooveFX that easily can be scaled and uh, moved and rotated and whatever you can do with any objects. So um, this is how it looks like. I think, does it work? No, it doesn't. Um, but how to create that? I just define a path element. And I can say, OK, it should be translated in x or y position, wherever you want to, and then set the stroke how the stroke should be and what the, uh, how it should be filled with, with gray in there. OK, and then I just say move to this point, x, y. And then make a cubic curve or other curves um, to this position with these control points. Maybe if you have worked with some of these um, vector graphic tools, you know these busy lines where you have these handles where they can move to raise and lower the, uh, the curves. So this is exactly what you do there. Um, and as you see for this, this could be really tiresome sometimes, because this is the whole code. But you will see here line two and close path is going back to the first position. Um, but 
I'm lazy as most of the other developers as well, there is something for simplification, because as I have that as a, uh, this is another thing, but just for showing that, um, as an SVG file, Inkscape has a nice feature. And this is a feature from the old times of JavaFX 1. But you can save any ink file to JavaFX. This JavaFX file that is created is the old JavaFX script from version 1. But it's very, very, very similar to what we have in GrooveFX. Because if you look to that path here, you see, OK, we have this stroke width that we had here as well. Stroke width, stroke line cap, and so on. You have elements, and there you have a move to with an uppercase M. And here we have a move to with a lowercase M. And here we have um, colons. That's the same. Here we have normal parentheses, not curly brackets, and we're missing the commas, but that's very easy to transfer. So this is how I did that, because I don't do that manually. Um, so using that feature, it's really easy to do that. And for easy path, it's as well still easy. easy if you want to have a rectangle, you can do that very easy as well with these, these points, have these paths. Um, but for SVG, we have another possibility. This is using SVT as the normal defined SVG path. This is the path that is really written into the SVG file. And you can see that in Inkscape as well, if you go to the path, and here this is the path value in this exactly this format. And I just copied that out here and put it into a SVG path element. This is my content, and then it's drawing this SVG image. On top of that, I can say how the color is, and the stroke is, and all the other stuff, um, like translation, scaling. Here I just scale that to 10% of the size, and fill it with white, and the stroke is white, and stroke with this too, and so on, translate it to the position. But, uh, so I can do everything that I can do with vector graphics very easily using the SVG path. I easily could have read that from files as well. And there is as well a, a project for showing SVG graphics. An FSG support, um, SVG support is not basically in JavaFX, but there is a project from colleagues of mine uh, where you just have a different image renderer that just, where you can just SVGs use it as in every other image. And here are some other things like a rectangle and a circle. Um, for elements that I want to show. And here I say this rectangle, this has rounded edges. So we have a circle or arcs at the borders. Um, where is it here? The wrong one. Sorry. So here. I added as well some anim animation. We see that how that works easy. But you see here we have this, um, these rounded edges, or rounded corners, sorry. And you have a triangle, a circle. And this is the SVG image we just sh have shown. For the triangle, I use a polygon element because triangles are no base elements on, uh, on JavaFX. But we can simplify that with the polygon, set into points, translation, scaling, filling, that's it. As well, added some actions. Even for these graphical elements, you can add elements, uh, add actions like on mouse press. So if I click on this triangle, it starts to rotate. And rotation is very easy to acquire by just saying, OK, down here, in the polygon, I have a rotate translation. And this ha should have run about a time of two seconds. And it should be interpolate the values from the start value, that is the current position or to current angle, to minus 360 degree. It should interpolate that in a linear way with a tween. And it should cycle indefinitely. So always, always, always. And this rotation, I just give it a no, um, 
put it to a variable. Uh, later on, uh, beforehand, we had this ID tag. Um, this ID is supported for all nodes, but not for things like uh, transitions and stuff like that. But you can easily go around that by just adding these variables there. Automatically, this is like an enclosure. This will be put to the binding of the builder. And you, as well, can use it everywhere else. Like I use it up here for if the mouse is pressed and the status is animation is running, then pause it. And if not, then play it. This way, you can e have easily um, animations running on your, your thing, and on your screen or your eye. And if you have multiple transitions that should run at the same time, you have the parallel transition. There is a spell, a sequential transi transition that makes sure that the second one is um, starting right after the first one has finished. Here, this is running in parallel, so they will be synchronized. First of all, it's a translation, so it's movement in x, y position, and the scaling of the size. Because scaling is from the center point on, I add this transition to get it more to the right side. And to start that, I just have to say, play from start, and that's it. So these animation stuff and the graphical features are really helpful, and you can do that a lot as well using effects. And these effects as well, OK, to this rectangle, add a blending mode. Blending modes are like addition, multiply, screen, and so on that you could know from graphical tools. And two effects. One of them is showing an image. This is so ripple in the background. And uh, below that, just have a, radiant, a radial gradient that's painted there. and. Uh, on this position. And as well, for another thing, we just see the result in a moment. Uh, for this circle, I want to have a circle that has the radial gradient and a glowing effect because it should be like a sun. It's an orange circle. And this should move around a path. I show the result. There you see in the background, you have moving this circle, the sun around the, the path I just created. And here in the background, you see the radiant, a gradient moving back and forth. It's not so good visible on the screen, I think. Um, but there is like, like a lighting, light spot that is moving back and forth, or up and down. So for acquiring that, for the animation stuff, is that I say, OK, this is the path where I want to s the sun to walk around um, along. I can just define it as a normal path. The problem is, if I define it in here, it will be visible. <coughs> but I don't want to see the path. I just want to run along it. So for that, I have this no parent tag that is just making sure that it's created. And it's created in this variable, the path, later on. But it is not added to the parent, although it is defined in here. So with a no parent, you can just make sure that it will not be added to the scene graph of JavaFX. Um, but later on here, I can just use the path for the path transition of the circle. And for the, um, for the background uh, radiant stuff, uh, radi uh, gradient stuff, I have the problem that gradients are not, are not um, animatable. So, but what I can animate is the, um, is the paint property of a color. So what I do is just create an interpolator, a custom interpolator in here, where just for each position, for each fraction of the time frame, I just create a new radian that will be used for drawing, and then it looks like it's really moving down to the background. So because of sake of time, I just get a bit of speed. Um, you as well can easily add your own components. Um, you just have to prepend your components here like that. Here I use the control of X breadcrumb bar. Um, just prepend it with node. A node just takes every node. And 
uses that, and you, on top of that, you can still use the other stuff like preferred head, head and selected crumb and so on. It's always, always setting these properties automatically. And um, you can also use that for containers, for example, the MIG layout um, container, the MIG pane layout uh, container, um, but you have to use container because node is a leaf, so node doesn't allow you to add other nodes inside. Um, but container allows you to add other stuff into the, into the container. So then it could look like that. Um, if you want to really make it look like the same thing, so you want to have a um, grid view and message element down here so you can use it as all the other elements, it's easy, you can just register your own properties or your own uh, factories like the grid view. This is just the class of the node. If you say register bean factory, it will automatically create a factory if it's the default behavior. If you have a different behavior that you need, you can just create your own message factory and define the, uh, the, the behavior in there. How to do that? I want to point you to my Bob the Builder talk because there it is um, in deep created and it's not so difficult, but too much for this session here. So, and if you want to create applications, bigger applications, I really want to point you to the Gryphon framework that for JavaFX applications is using GroovyFX uh, for creating views. And Gryphon is not only a but it's coming from Groovy, but it's not only um, based on Groovy, but it's, it's written in Java. You can even write Java code. Now you as well can write Kotlin code if you like to. Um, I think you still have the biggest efforts or advantages using Groovy code, uh, but the others are supported as well. Uh, you can not only create JavaFX, but as well Swing and Pivo and Turner applications. And it gives you help for, or gives you the, the framework for MVC, MVVC, or presentation model, whatever separation of concern you want to create for their, your applications with a lot of other useful stuff, like, um, like an event bus inside your application, stuff like that. So creating desktop applications, um, I really want to give you Griffin on the hand. It's really, really helpful. You can find it in griffinframework.org. So in there, sorry for the long time, but the question, I thank you for the, your, for the audience, and if you have questions, feel free. Are there any questions? If not, I will be here the whole week, so just come to me, and thank you. <laughs>